there's the docx there which i've got open in word which is this thing um pretty much as you saw it on sunday yeah um and then there's a custom style map which is need that's just used in the conversion process and the we convert it to html and you have to explicitly add in the top and the bottom because it's yeah. just the sort of body parts of the html um, so you can see that first stage here in build sh which you won't be able to run because mm -hmm. windows has a different format but you will be able to run the same commands so that or almost the same actually i think the one i'm highlighting here changes so that clears the contents of that output folder which is where everything goes that we work with this is um a command to convert the docx into um, an html file called pipeline body um, and then we take the pipeline body and the prefix and the suffix and join them together to make pipeline.html so what we've got at this point we look at pipeline body um, you can see the HTML version of the Word document without the top and the bottom. So and that's, yeah. and that's a generic script that you could run on any Word document? Yes, yeah, so I'm using a tool um, called Mammoth, um, which actually does the work. Uh -huh. um, so literally all I do is invoke Mammoth through that um, uh, convoluted syntax let me make that a bit bigger okay. um, and pass it the input file name and you can see here peculiarities like if there's a space in the file yeah. name we use a backslash yeah and the output file name and then the command line switch to tell it to use that custom mapping um, okay and then you um, then I join it together with the with the, the prefix pipe. and the X. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. So that gives us the difference between this pipeline body, which just goes straight into a heading, then jumping ahead of ourselves inside the wiki folder. Um, there's a folder called raw HTML, mm -hmm. um, and it contains that meta file, and then we overwrite that HTML file. Mm -hmm. And you can see here how it's what we saw before, plus the prefix and at the other end, that mm -hmm. very modest suffix. So this is where the, the, that previous stuff is the sort of outside Tiddly Wiki bit. And yes. then this is the inside Tiddly Wiki bit. And that's the stuff that you've been already playing with before and had discovered the tool, et cetera. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. the actual process of converting to HTML are done but, um, in the text slicer plugin. But the text slicer plugin works a bit differently because it uses paragraphs as the tiddler okay. boundaries, whereas here we're sort of slicing up by the headings. Anyway, the structure of the wiki is there's a tiddly wiki info file, and that tells it what languages, themes, and plugins to use. And it's also the place where one stores the command lines that do various useful things. So that one saves a copy of the wiki that one encrypted saves a um encrypted copy of the wiki with the password emcf um then in the plugins folder we've got this text fillet plugin mm -hmm. and this is a well could be but isn't entirely generic um way of slicing html right. tiddlers up into their constituent tiddlers and then there's a theme folder which just contains the blue meridian magic and then in the tiddlers themselves besides that raw html stuff we saw some system stuff like a site title and site subtitle and then a few bits and pieces that are the top level menu items and so on um which are those, all of which will change um and so yeah, the tabs, I see. Okay, so that's how you bring in. Okay. So, well, the, the theme, the Blue Meridian right. theme, contains an above story tiddler that uh -huh. contains this tabs macro. So it calls on all tiddlers. Uh, it makes the tabs be those mm -hmm. tiddlers with the tag mm -hmm. main tab. And then in here, each of these has that tab main tab. Tag <laughs> main tab, sorry. Can't right. So if we run it, 
Um, and here I run the batch file. Um, you get some not very helpful output. That's output by Mammoth. Um, mm -hmm. I can't easily get rid of that. This is totally wiki's standard output of telling you where it is. And then it's done. So then back in the browser, we refresh. So what I've done at the moment is um, the, oh, look, I've got a styling issue that I've messed up. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Um, uh, what I've got here is switching between tabs. Um, these three mm -hmm. are just dummy text. And in fact, that's dummy text you might recognize. Uh, uh, but welcome is the introductory material from the Word document. So going back here, if we go out of outline view, it's that chunk. Um, and you can see it going down to... Can you go back to outline view and reduce it to level one? How do I do that like that? Um, there's a show level button above the show text for Oh, yeah. Okay, and then do level two actually, right? So in the case of issue areas, level two is the actual stuff and immediately mm -hmm. below that's the description of the issue. Area. Right, and so those headers, and do you, and you need the name domain, you need the word domain in there, right? I don't think we do, but I put it in to make it clearer okay. when I was showing it to Addy. And then if we open one of those, there's um, a subdomain and then the organization and then what I'm calling the segments about that organization. Um, in generic terms, the, these are intervening subheadings which get turned into tags. That's a subject and those are subject segments. Um, so and now, that's, all, that's all custom to this particular document and that the notion is that you create a custom word template and have clients fill them in. Yeah, so the, and the code that I've written at the moment is specific to this layout. So the right. code knows about introduction organizations, knows what's under each one. But that code, which is here, um, could be generic. So this is the bit that handles introduction. And you can maybe see that it's, it calls one function and then it passes it a bunch of data. And similarly, this one. So the idea would be we'd turn this inside out a little. So it would yeah. be a okay. configuration file rather than modifying the code. Right. So and the, uh, what if um, on level one, two, three, can you just do, I think show level three, I think that's the um, organization name. That's a no, level three is the subdomain. Oh, level, so level four. Let's see level fours. Yeah, there's only... Yeah, so if... Um, can level two subdomain be reused without causing any trouble? Yes, yeah, so if there was another... Um, if there was another organization here, um, it would inherit the same domain and uh, subdomain. Yeah, but if there was another domain that had a subdomain of teacher effectiveness uh that clash at the moment that would clash okay so that everything's got to be unique yes and i think it should be because i mean under their possible. structure yeah 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 so they're so they're all this is super hierarchical <laughs> um yeah well i mean more um another way of thinking about it is that we, we use a single flat namespace for titles and require them to be unique. And with the reason why we need to do that is because in the static representation, we'll use these titles for navigation. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, got it. So, so now at the moment, the only thing that's built into the prettily formatted part is that one introduction tiddler. Mm -hmm. But if we go behind the scenes um, and look, uh, well, maybe here actually, so there's one tiddler tagged introduction, which is mm -hmm. said introduction. Um, there's these four tiddlers tagged issue area. So those, those are the headings. And if I click on one of them, that's the body text beneath that heading. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's those domains, those subdomains, and these tiddlers are empty. They're just tagged subdomains. Right. Uh, and then under organization, we've got two organizations. So if we open new teacher center again is blank with an organization 
but it's the um, organization info, as I've called it. These mm. are the individual segments. So there's the current view of the um, new teacher center. There's the issue area. So um, those are going to those are going to require um, descriptive text, in a sense, in the tiddler title to differentiate. If, if they want them. Um, I mean, the other thing... Um, How they, otherwise, they'd all be named the same. Uh, sorry, which things? Um, so the, uh, what do you have them called? Organization Info. Uh, the, those names are composed. So I take the okay. name of the segment, which is current view, description, etc., combine it with so no those are generated to be unique assuming all the other things that exactly so you have you're going to have to have something in there to uniqueify that those tiddler no names. no the tiddler names are automatically uniqueified so okay so we, so so what we're combining is those um those names mm -hmm. of the segments right. with the um yeah. with the name of the organization and because right. the name of the organization is unique the yeah, result that's what I meant. so those those are going to have to stay so you'll have to when if you call on them you can't necessarily call on the tiddler title to be displayed you know in a list or something you're going to need something else i think that most of the time what i'm expecting is that we'd make it so that new teacher center um the body oh, of it yeah. would automatically transclude exactly. in the correct order the segments and so therefore, um, you'd, you'd probably never open the individual segment tiddlers. Um, but you, would yeah, them, you might use them in lists. As I'm just thinking ahead to like, if you wanted to have generate all the issue areas for us, you'd have to, you'd parse on the title and grab the issue area. Uh, well, the issue area is a bit different because although at the moment I'm okay, just- I didn't mean, that's the wrong one, but logo. Uh, again, that's actually a different one. But if you um, uh, the, so if you cho choose something like summary assessment, yes, there you go. Thanks. <laughs> um, that um, uh, I mean, I think that title is usable. Um, yeah. it, it, it would be fine in a list. Yeah. Um, well, but we should think but about the format. The context, the, see, the context of the list. If in the list you're listing all the summary assessments, mm -hmm. then the title that makes sense to display in the list would not include the word summary assessment. It would probably just be the organization name. Correct. So you just that, that's so. Um, so what fields do we have in those tiddlers? So at the moment, there's no fields tying okay. things together. So where I am at the moment is. Um, uh, my very next stage is to make it so that these um, uh, the organizations are tagged with the relevant domain and subdomain mm -hmm. and then I need to do a bit more tying together of fields for navigation. So and, what's, your, and what's the, your current thinking of the differences between using tags versus fields? It seems I keep getting drawn to fields and almost well, end up on tags. <laughs> Um, I think the, the, the thing about tags is that they are, um, they're a special case of using fields in a way that is familiar to end users. Yes, I get that. So I think, that, but I think that gives us the answer is that the time to use tags is when it makes sense for end users. So here, issue areas are going to be tags. So something I'm not doing yet is this should be, this can be a list of um, issue areas under each of these things. So they could be, uh, yeah. Okay. And each of those would be made into a separate tag mm -hmm. um, for, the, um, for the organization. What I'm thinking of doing is making it so that tags that are system tags that start dollar colon slash would be by default hidden. Mm -hmm. And that'll allow us to continue to have this type of tag, which is sort of structurally distinguishing things, and the domain tags, which are things like quality foster care, and still to reuse. So you could treat tags with different tags differently, basically, and run almost run multiple tag templates by filtering the tags. Not quite what I was thinking. I was thinking of a simpler thing that we just that have a switch for whether tag pills for tags that are system tags show up. And then that would allow us to use system tags for things like this organization info, mm -hmm. um, but keep them hidden from end users 
where they're using domain tags, the user domain tags. I think what I've been doing, and I didn't really realize this until we were talking about this, is I'm beginning to play with the notion of running a set of tags using the tag as a display mechanism, not so much the tags, using the tags operator, but not the tags template, and then selecting carefully the tags I want to display in a template using fields, basically. <laughs> Um, that sounds plausible. Okay. Um, and, and so, so you, I mean, yeah, it's a more sophisticated tag filter and the general, yeah. the general concept of both is the idea of being able to stipulate which tags are displayed. The particular example here, all of these tags should not be tags. In fact, correct. <laughs> um, they, they all identify yeah. Um, they're a singular thing that identifies the type of one of the generated tiddlers. Right. But the reason I've got them as tags at the moment is because I can then easily know. Okay, yeah. Uh, and sometimes they're interesting because what they do, for example, under keep, yeah. is they may provide navigation from keep in multiple ways. You can, so you Absolutely. can, yes. So you can navigate and that's the, um, yeah, that's the, but in yeah. fact, I think we'll, what I'll do... I don't think they need it. So anyway, so we're off no. track on the... And, um, but I'll probably make them be uh, a type field or a, mm -hmm. a fillet type field and then use that in a view template segment that selectively displays different stuff for different types of things. So yes. the, all that sort of navigation backwards and forwards show me the subdomains under this domain, that kind of thing. And if they could, and if that could be an option that, that they're, let's start calling them the editor, <laughs> as opposed to mm -hmm. we're the yeah. designer, but the, the editor could turn on and off to facilitate better navigation at a executive level. That, would yeah. be, so that, that will draw them into the future. That's the hope, yeah. Yeah, okay. So my ne I've got a bit more stuff to do on um, this fillet plugin that uh -huh. does the chopping up along the lines we said about making tying things together with fields um, and using the tags properly. And then I want to, as discussed, get the static output right. Mm -hmm. um, so that, um, uh, and to do that, we'll also pretty much get right this view the sort of behind the scenes yeah. okay um and the behind the scenes wiki view you know, by hiding these tags um right. putting the right tags in and so on and the view are, template are there do you have a sense that there's like are there costs to having many fields no not really okay so so fielding is like you should you should be you should field everything basically that you can um, you certainly could. I mean, I, th I think the, the, the rule of thumb is when you're worried, uh, this, this is a performance concern. Mm -hmm. And um, the performance hotspot in TiddlyWiki is uh, from 100 miles away is filter execution. So um, when, you know, in many cases, uh, when you run a filter, it's got to iterate through all the tiddlers there mm -hmm. are. Um, and possibly more than once in some situations. So do but, all the filters get run on loading or run when, they're, when the tiddler is called? They get run on refresh, essentially. On refresh. So that's when, when a tiddler changes and we want to reconstruct the screen. So mm -hmm. we say with um, navigating to a tiddler, the story list system tiddler gets changed to include the name of the new tiddler. And then, so, and to detect that when we refresh the story river, we rerun that filter and compare its output to the but last. Do you rerun every filter in the wiki or only the one? Pretty you much every filter in the wiki will, that is displayed, um, will get re executed. What do you mean that's um, displayed? So that's why, well, so right, the recent tab here. Mm -hmm. um, which uh, okay, it doesn't show anything. Um, the all tab here, that's mm -hmm. the result of running a filter that returns all non-system tiddlers. Um, and so right now, if I do something like that, um, uh, which causes a refresh, then um, that list will have been recomputed. But if I switch to a different tab, um, then uh, that all filter is not getting computed. Okay. Interesting. Well, I've been thinking of putting filters as field values. Um, yes, that can be useful. 
But I didn't know that if you have at an app level, like for my, uh, this is for my photo wiki, which is hopefully going to have 20,000 photos soon, if that would begin to create performance issues. No, not really. I mean, it depends what you then do with them, because I mean, the chances are you're then you're going to use them to generate links from a tiddler or something. Yes, and exactly. um, yeah, if, if that filters an expensive one, um, that will, uh, and the, um, it's not easy to show you actually. Okay. Um, the difference between an expensive filter and an inexpensive filter is phenomenal. So for instance, the links filter, which mm -hmm. gives you the outgoing links from a tiddler that requires us to parse the tiddler in question. So it's ridiculously expensive. Whereas some other things like the prefix operators that let you look, you know, the look at the prefix of each entry in the list are relatively efficient. Hmm. Okay. So that's a, longer term consideration over okay but yeah I, so if, if if you if for this one i think if we're going to 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 sort of maximize the generic learning that we can do from this project if it's okay with you i think putting everything in a field that you could that you have basically well as, as i said i think that the, the the one thing here that that needs to be tags is the issue areas and uh in the user's domain oh yeah 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 it's not about what you're going to tag but but having the capability of having everything in a field well then you can do whatever you want yeah that's roughly about right um i mean the the and yes so things like type and so on um yeah. which are which genuinely are properties of a tiddler it makes sense um, for them to be filled, certainly. Yeah, but like even keep summary assessment. So, would you imagine that keep summary assessment tiddler would have a domain tag? A domain uh, they, they, value they, for this, the domain? Um, this, I think, just should have a um, tiddler, uh, a field, sorry, that links back to this tiddler. And, uh, and also a field that says I'm an in organization info. Uh, so, why, but then in order to get all the summary assessments for a particular domain, you so we've got a field that says I'm a summary assessment, right? You'd, you'd need to, yeah, you definitely need a field that says I'm a summary assessment, but if you don't have the field domain, you have, oh, I see. yeah, no, we'd need something slightly more for, to be able to do that. So the, there's the, in some cases like that, you get to interesting questions that one can write a filter that would compute that on the fly. Mm -hmm. but one may wish to duplicate some of the information that's on the organization tiddler in the organization info tiddler. Yeah, that's what I was beginning to under, try to understand, like when do you want to do that? So I've been Roughly, doing hierarchical would, filters in a template. Is that the way to do it? Um, you, one, yes, one would probably use a template. Uh, roughly, one would be trying to avoid um, duplication of uh, redundant data. So one would um, uh, try um, for as long as possible to do it where it's a normalized data model where the okay. data the one's recording is sort of minimal. Yeah. Minimized. So you try to use dependencies rather than repeat data. So you'd, in order to, well, so, so for your example, to find um, all the summary assessments in a particular domain, um, one would get all the organizations in the domain yeah. and then from the organization, one would move to the summary assessment, which would be a matter of looking for tiddlers that yes. have the I'm a summary field set to the current tiddler. Yeah, okay. So, the problem that I have when I do that is then I lose, I'm, I lose, uh, well, I'll, I'll post it to the group, so, okay. Uh, well, I think what, what, one issue, as soon as you use, the, there's no UI affordances for using fields as, for navigation. Um, you know, so again, with tags, you get this automatic linky linky for free. Right. Uh, and with fields, they are by default hidden. So one needs to sort of put more effort in to um, make them visible. Yeah. Um, so I'm quite, I'm quite pleased at the moment. I think um, that and I'm hoping that by tomorrow I'll have reasonable static output that you know they'll recognize but with some hyperlinked navigation um and something more or less equivalent just split up slightly differently in this interactive version and then hoping that for most of the time we'll be focusing on the interactions we want in here mm -hmm. is the plan well, and
Go ahead. Then when do they, um, they owe us their document at some point this week, I believe? Well, what's, cha- what's changed, I spoke to Adi on Monday, is they pushed it back a month. And oh, a month. Shipping in August. So what okay. they want under the current contract is to deliver a, a version of the May pipeline, which means that I've got all of the final materials, okay. which is actually excellent because one of the minor hassles is you know, while one's doing breakneck development and changing lots of things, having to coordinate um, content drops with them, which would undoubtedly, you know, as normal, have little wriggles and niggles, yes. um, which made life a lot more complicated. So um, that, that means I've shown this. I had a call with Addy on Monday, and I showed okay. her the template. And she, so we were just doing this stuff, and she was perfectly happy with that. Um, and then the expectation is they won't actually touch it. I'll do the rest of the copying and pasting to get all of the organizations into here. Um, and then off we go. Okay. You want me to do that word document? Because uh, at some level, if, you, if somebody else does it, 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 it provides an, an, an additional level of testing for us. Uh, you mean filling out this with the other information? Yeah. It's very kind, but to be honest, it's a it's a sort of twenty minute copying and okay. pasting while I'm watching yeah. telly. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> um, which, uh, which I yeah. So no, don't worry. I mean, it, um, I think okay. the, what would be useful is um, uh, again to have you. The most useful thing is your continued um, understanding, which is um, promoted by you being able to run the darn thing. Mm-hmm. So well, I recorded this, so I'm going to uh, play my recording and be a student and see how you are as a teacher. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what I have tried I to I should do, have mentioned that to you before, I'm sorry, but it's just... Absolutely, yeah. no problem. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> what I've um, tried to do is, um, in the read me here, mm-hmm. um, explain how to get up and running. I think and, I've got that done. Yeah, I think you have too. It has changed slightly, though, of course. Okay. Um, but it, on the it, when you look in the plugins in the wiki, actually, hang on, let's change the theme. I'm going to make a button for changing back to a sensible theme. Um, uh, the where is it? Text for that. Here we go. There's docs in the plugin um, mm-hmm. for, and th- this is what explains um, the stuff that we've mostly been discussing. Although. Mm-hmm. I wrote this before I wrote the code, and the code ended mm-hmm. up doing it slightly differently. That's um, more of your spec than your documentation, but that's fine. <laughs> exactly that, yeah. yeah. Um, so hopefully between those bits, you should be able to um, figure things out. Okay, and um, I can also um, then mess with another document and make sure and see that other assessment. Exactly, yes. yes. Yeah. I think that's... And you, uh, you'll find that there are some things some errors that it traps. So some, if there's the top level headings that it's expecting, like organizations mm-hmm. and introduction, it'll complain if it doesn't see them. But I think there are other errors that um, won't get flagged, that it'll just silently give you an empty wiki. And there are probably other errors that will set it off in an infinite loop and you'll have to press Control C to cancel it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, but, and it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you might let me, when do you think you might get to be doing that? Cause I'll try to make sure that things are in good shape for you at the right time. Uh, so this week, um, I think it'd be after Thursday after, t- I've got a call this time tomorrow with Addy. Yeah. Um, it will Friday. I'm Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm largely out. Okay. Um, I could get to do stuff, some stuff limited late Friday well, night, but um, and then I have this wedding in Detroit that we're going to. So yes, but it would be Thursday afternoon, I think is a possibility. I mean, the other thing I can and should do is just mail, I'll mail you the current output um, so that you can have a poke around on that because there's really, um, when I say it's good to understand it, of course, there's two, levels of understanding here there's the processing um so that you can do it and try it out in other things but there's also the um uh 
understanding what ends up in the wiki. So let me see if Schneider latest drop attach. Um, federation. Okay, so I've just sent you the current HTML file. Okay. Excellent. Um, so we should, if you're around some, oh, well, we'll, we'll do our standard touching base via email then in the meantime. Um, yeah. I'll be feverishly on this for the next 24 hours. Um, hopefully things will move along quite a bit. Okay, yeah, and if you want to touch, if, if, it help, if it's helpful to, to, I mean, today I'm, I'm at work all day today and tomorrow as well. So if, if you want to do something tomorrow morning or, or later tonight, you know, it's only 10.30 here, so I've got the rest of the day. Uh, I think that I'll probably, but the time that might be good to talk is after I've had the video conference with Addy tomorrow. So that's okay. at, at, at 10 o'clock your time. So 11 o'clock your time um, or something like that. Okay. So like between 11 and 12 my time tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Um, and let's just question mark that. Yep. Um, but I think it'd be useful to just talk over yep. um, what we've discussed, what discussed with Addy while it's fresh in my mind. Yeah. Okay, great. Brilliant. Steve, yeah, thank brilliant. you very much. Yep. Um, have fun with that, and I shall look forward to speaking soon. <laughs> okay. Bye. Many thanks. Cheers. Bye.